I love Yoichi Isaki. Whether he is under intense pressure and finds himself at a roadblock or is just being manipulative, this man is everything that Ego himself would call a true egoist. Now when people look at sports anime or sports in general, they work only because of teamwork and a lot of people have talked about why that makes this series so special, the fact that it's not about teamwork at all. But I'm here to talk about Isagi today and how he differs from every protagonist that usually starts out as either weird, a weird of a player, or untalented and finds their work through teamwork and relying on people. What separates Yoichi from every one of these guys is that while soccer is something that still forces him to work with people, he himself at times can be a bit crazy in the sense that his personality does a 180 when he is pushed to change and evolve. He does so with a mindset that completely terrifies you when you realize this guy is basically manipulating the whole field. Everyone has a weapon in this anime and it's not some superpower, this is not Kuroko no Basket, it is simply a skill that they will use to become the best striker as we have said multiple times in this series. Isagi knows what's always working on the field, he has a special kind of awareness and can just tell whatever is happening at all times. And given the situation, he can use his ability to help his teammates or help himself move up in the rankings quite selfishly. And in Blue Lock, you have to be pretty selfish at times, that's kind of the whole point of the series. He can do the most gangster shit even when everything seems lost because he has to. And this is another thing that I love, like about Isagi in general. His other ability to rewrite himself. To rewrite oneself is not an easy thing for anyone to do, but Isaki does it as if he's just just breathing. He has this ability to rewrite his sort of code inside himself, taking experiences from certain bouts and then using that to make himself stronger. It's like he's just tearing himself apart and putting himself back together. And he does so with such ease. But also, it doesn't seem too outlandish. The author doesn't make him look like a supernatural thing. It's just him thinking and just puzzling everything together. What he essentially does is just grow in a different way. It's almost psychopathic, and I'm going to use the word psychopathic a little bit more in this uh, little rant, but you get the point. Slowly but surely, Isaki is making himself the ultimate striker. In the second chapter, it is not the genius striker that eventually makes it into Blue Lock. It is our main character who, when given the opportunity, takes the first step into a new world. You can see the euphoric feeling that overtakes him when he gets a hidden. But what I love about this scene is how Isaki reacts when confronted by the beaten genius. Ryosuke Kira says he does not deserve to be kicked out, showing his true colors that he says he is talented while Isaki simply took a cheap shot. And for some reason during this, while Isaki should be feeling proud of himself, he feels bad. You can see that from the look. That he is showing but in a few minutes or a few seconds might i say that look is completely gone it's like he's two different people i don't know if that's to do with some like certain personality that he has aside from his original one that we've seen so far but it's like something is inside our main character always waiting to be released the people he starts off being nervous about become the very people he tramples in the most satisfying way to move forward that is cool as fuck I personally don't like main characters who act all happy and, you know, yell for no reason. I'm looking at you, Asta. But for me, Isagi is the perfect kind of character. In that sense, he is the perfect balance. All it always takes for him to change is to be shown how desperate things are. And the more you push him down, the higher he rises type of stuff. That happens for every shonen character. But the way that Isagi does it is especially satisfying. Also, I love the irony of scenes showing Isagi calling other people geniuses when he's literally controlling everything and just manipulating them. This applies very much to how Yoichi can also devour talents and people. Not in that way, you sus ass niggas. Everyone in this series basically can devour someone and overtake them. That's what the word means in that sense. Like how Toto says, you know, for Yuji to devour him. Again, sus, but it's anime. We get used to these things. And uh, this very much, very much applies to how specifically Yoichi overcomes Baro. Baro is a character that centers himself around the idea of being the king. He is the playmaker, the one who peasants should listen to, and it shows in every way, the way he talks, the way he acts, even how he trains. It's all very egotistical. So how does Yoichi make Baro listen to him? Isaki doesn't play nice at all. This isn't some like, oh, I'll be your friend type thing. He actively antagonizes and pisses him off, showing how he was fine without him at all. He played mental gymnastics with him and made Baro snap. And he did everything that he wanted, that Baro wanted Isaki to do while being ordered by him without even realizing it. He was being played around with like a doll. Isaki went as far as to quite literally become Baro, showing off his preful side and essentially becoming someone that Baro describes himself as the king. 
Even what Bachira describes as a monster is what Isaki not only plays with but embodies. And another thing that adds to Yoichi's ability is to find someone's weak spot no matter how good they are. That's how he overcame Baro because he knew that the only way for him to move forward and pass the type of person was to become that person. It's not time to play nice. It is another thing that I love about this dude. Despite being first shown off as a kind of meek person, he is so intelligent and calm that even when he is told by others that he will never catch up, he does so and devours them. And I think that out of everyone, he is not the only one who embodies the very idea of egoism, but will become the best egoist. Everyone's ego is different, but he doesn't need to be a certain type of thing. He can change at any time to adapt. He's not one thing. He's not just one archetype. He's always evolving and the story is so fast paced that you don't realize that he does these things in a matter of minutes. He does this like a snap of a finger. He changes himself. He chases you down. He wins. He scores every single goal that matters. Like I said, that is honestly psychopathic. You can't just change yourself like that, but Yoichi does it. And that's why I love Yoichi Isaki. He is awesome. And I'm happy that Bachira no longer has to play with an imaginary monster because the true one has finally arrived. And it's a good thing they're actually friends. If it wasn't for Bachira, I don't think Isaki would have changed as much as he has. Bachira saw potential in him and made him realize that every bit of him is as amazing as everyone else in Blue Lock. And the more he comforts Isaki, the more Isaki helps him. And I also love Bachira, by the way. If anyone even touches him, I will not only kill you, but I might do much worse. That dude is to be protected at all costs. No lie, Bachira is a badass. But anyway, that was my quick analysis of the true egoist of Blue Lock. Go read this manga.